Have you ever received a phone call from someone who has passed away? Imagine hearing the familiar voice of a loved one long after they've gone. Chilling, isn't it? These eerie phone calls from the dead have been reported worldwide, and today we're diving into some of the most spine-tingling cases that will make you question reality. Have you ever picked up your phone and heard something so strange, so unsettling, that it made your hair stand on end? Share your own eerie experiences in the comments below. We'd love to hear your stories. Before we get into these terrifying tales, make sure to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and hit that notification bell so you never miss out on our spine-tingling stories. Trust me, you won't want to miss what we have in store for you today. Charles Peck was a devoted father and a loving partner. On September 12, 2008, Charles was on a Metrolink commuter train in Los Angeles, California, when it collided head-on with a freight train in one of the deadliest rail disasters in U.S. history. Tragically, Charles was among the 25 people who lost their lives in the crash. But what happened after his death has left everyone perplexed and deeply unsettled. In the hours following the accident, Charles's fiance and other family members began receiving calls from his cell phone. Over the span of several hours, his fiance, his son, his stepmother, his brother, and his sister all received calls, totaling around 35 in number. Each time they answered, they heard nothing but static or silence on the other end. Desperately, they tried calling back, but the calls went unanswered. The last call was made just one hour before his body was found, and then the call stopped abruptly. Despite an exhaustive search, his phone was never found in the wreckage. Was it a technical glitch, or was Charles trying to reach out one last time? Ron and Annie Cantu were a loving couple from Texas, whose lives were turned upside down when their son Jonathan died in a tragic car accident. Jonathan was just 16 years old and full of life, and his untimely death left his parents devastated. As they were grappling with their immense grief, something extraordinary happened that both comforted and tormented them. Shortly after Jonathan's funeral, Ron and Annie started receiving brief, static-filled calls from Jonathan's cell phone. These calls occurred at odd hours, often late at night. When they answered, they could hear faint voices and static, sometimes catching a word or two that sounded eerily like Jonathan's voice. The emotional roller coaster of receiving these calls was overwhelming for the Cantus. They felt a mix of hope, believing Jonathan might be reaching out to them, and despair, questioning if their minds were playing tricks on them in their grief. Steve and Beth Lee thought they had found their dream home when they moved into a beautiful house in Black Forest, Colorado. But soon after settling in, they began experiencing a series of strange and frightening events. What started as odd noises and unexplained movements quickly escalated into something much more disturbing. Among the various paranormal phenomena, one of the most unsettling experiences was receiving phone calls from deceased relatives. Beth received several calls from her grandmother, who had passed away years earlier. These calls weren't just random, they contained messages that were personal and comforting, like her grandmother was watching over her. The phone calls, combined with other ghostly activities in the house, led to extensive paranormal investigations, making the Black Forest House a well-known haunted location. Chantal, a resident of Paris, France, was a young woman dealing with the immense sorrow of losing her mother. Her mother had been her rock, and her passing left Chantal feeling lost and heartbroken. Just days after her mother's funeral, Chantal experienced something that would change her life forever. One evening, Chantal checked her phone and found a new voicemail. To her shock, it was from her deceased mother's number. With trembling hands, she played the message. It was her mother's voice, calm and reassuring, saying, I'm fine, don't worry about me. The message was brief but profound. Chantal was left with a mix of emotions. Relief that her mother might still be watching over her, and confusion about how such a thing could be possible. This voicemail gave Chantal a sense of closure, yet it also opened up a realm of questions about the afterlife. Ed Warren, one of the most renowned paranormal investigators, known for his work with his wife Lorraine, received a phone call that shook even his experienced nerves. This took place at their home in Monroe, Connecticut. After the priest passed away, Ed received a phone call from his number. When he answered, he heard the priest's voice delivering a message related to their last conversation and ongoing investigations. The details were specific and could not have been known by anyone else. This call not only reinforced Ed's belief in the supernatural, but also added a new layer of mystery to their work, making him ponder the true extent of communication beyond the grave. George Meek was a pioneer in the field of instrumental transcommunication, ITC, dedicated to bridging the gap between the living and the dead. Based in Franklin, North Carolina, he spent years developing a device known as the Spiricom, which he believed could facilitate communication with the spirit world. After the death of his colleague, Dr. George Jeffries Muller, Meek began receiving phone calls from Muller. These calls were not mere static or vague messages. 
They were detailed conversations about technical aspects of the Spiricom and other research they had been working on together. Muller provided insights and information that only he would know, leaving Meek convinced that they had succeeded in creating a true bridge between worlds. Frank Jones from London, England was still grieving the loss of his close friend, Ruth Baxter, when he experienced something that defied explanation. Ruth had always been a strong presence in his life, and her death left a void that was hard to fill. A few days after Ruth's funeral, Frank received a voicemail from her number. The message was simple yet deeply moving. I'm okay. The timing of the message, coupled with the familiarity of Ruth's voice, left Frank both comforted and confused. How could Ruth leave a voicemail after her death? This incident made Frank question the boundaries of life and death, adding to the mysterious nature of their friendship. David Griscom, a physicist and paranormal researcher based in Bethesda, Maryland, had spent years studying the unknown. But nothing prepared him for the personal encounter he had with a deceased friend. David received a phone call from a friend who had recently passed away. The voice on the other end was unmistakably his friends, sharing specific details and messages that only they knew. This experience not only reinforced David's belief in the paranormal, but also influenced his future research, as he now had first-hand evidence of communication from beyond the grave. Judy Resnick from New York City faced unimaginable grief after the loss of her husband. Struggling with grief and loss, Judy found herself facing a series of events that were as comforting as they were unsettling. Late at night, Judy began receiving phone calls from her deceased husband. These calls varied from comforting messages of love and reassurance to distressing cries for help. Each call left Judy in emotional turmoil as she grappled with the possibility that her husband was trying to reach out to her from beyond the grave. These calls led her on a journey to find answers, seeking solace in the belief that love transcends even death. A family in the UK, residing in a quaint village in Yorkshire, found themselves at the center of a mystery involving an old red rotary phone in their home. This phone became the source of a series of inexplicable events that defied logic and reason. The family received sporadic calls from a deceased uncle on this old red phone, which wasn't even connected to an active line. Each call was a chilling reminder of the past, as the uncle's voice conveyed messages that were personal and specific. The fact that these calls came from a disconnected phone only added to the eerie nature of the events, leaving the family with more questions than answers and cementing their belief in the supernatural. These stories of phone calls from the dead leave us questioning the boundaries between our world and the next. Have you ever experienced something similar? Share your thoughts and stories in the comments below. Don't forget to like, subscribe to the Phantasmal Eternity channel and hit the notification bell to stay updated with more spine-tingling tales. Thank you for watching, and remember, some calls are better left unanswered.